All right, guys, welcome to Performance Farms channel. I'm John Rodriguez, and in today's video, we're gonna be uh, straying away from the um, performance gear talk, you know, and reviews, and going more into a duty side, because um, I am a deputy sheriff for an agency <clears throat> in Florida, so that's all I'll tell you. Uh, that being said, um, I've changed my belt around a little bit. I did a video over a year ago uh, about my initial belts. I had a couple belts set up, but this is my primary belt and how I use it now. Uh, some things have changed. The belt has changed, and some of the uh, equipment on it has changed. So <clears throat> let me just go over it. Again, this is my opinion. Your belt may vary. This is just a broad base of how you should start off with your belt, and then you move stuff around how you like it, all right? So, that being said. This is an X-Belt in basket weave. X-Belt did not pay me for this review or this video. Um, I bought this belt by myself. They are pretty expensive. Um, and they do take a little bit because it's a one-man shop, so I waited about 10 weeks. But that said, the belt is 100 times better than my Bianchi. The leather that is on the belt is a hundred times better. Um, it seems a little bit more sleeker. The sewing seems stronger. Um, the Cobra buckle is amazing. It also, they changed where <clears throat> the Bianchi has the hooks on here and the, uh, the, the loops on this side. This flips it, which is great because you can take your belt off. You don't have to worry about uh, your underbelt catching your pants, or I mean catching your shirt and sharing it to pieces, you know, making it frail. Uh, also, I wear this as my everyday underbelt anyways. So it's comfortable. Uh, that being said, so got Cobra buckle. And then the last time I had two handcuffs on one, I've changed to one. Um, I carry another one in my vest and I carry another pair of handcuffs in my book bag um, that's in my vehicle. Uh, so I care about three pairs of handcuffs within reach. Uh, that being said, um, then we go on to the OC spray, Saber Red on a uh, zero nine uh, pouch or holster for it. Really love it. It's hard. It gives it some great. Um, uh, can't think of the word right now. Um, some great retention. That's the word. Uh, it gives us some great retention on it pulling it out. Uh, if you're in a fight or nothing, it's not going to be easy for somebody to just grab it on top and pull it out. Um, I normally, if I know I'm going to get into something and that's my go-to, I will pop it from the bottom and be able to grab it. Um, other than that, it's, I mean, it, it can be done, but it's kind of difficult and it doesn't put it in a good position to deploy. It has a little tab back here to cover. Um, I like that. Uh, another thing that's changed is my holster. Uh, I went to a light bearing holster, so now I have a TLR1 HL on a Safari Land, I believe it's a 6360 or 6368, uh, just an old school Safari Land, not the new 7000 series. I also have a tourniquet on a RDR bracket. Um, I can reach with both hands, pretty proud to that. I had my tourniquet back <clears throat> on this side somewhere, um, and I, I, I just wanted to clear it up. Um, moving this way, uh, because I wear a polo to work and not like class B's or anything, um, I have to wear my badge. So it's on my hip. Um, the days I do wear my class B's, it goes up here, so I'm able to slide things over. Um, but for right now, this is the way it's going to go. Um, I have two mags, um, two mags of um, for my Glock 21 in a um, zero 09 holster. Now. I'm gonna talk about mags again um, because it's, it is in a different orientation that I would normally wear, but it is possible. Um, normally I would like them this way, right? If you're right-handed, you want bullet tip facing the center of your body. So when you come in, boom, perfect, right? For left-handed people, same thing. You want it this way, so you come in this way. You don't want them sideways here like this because then how are you gonna do it? You're gonna come this way and go like that. It just it's not very, very efficient. Um, even if you put it on this side, you know, it's not, and it takes up a lot more space. Um, that's one of the things, uh, especially for smaller people, you wanna <clears throat> be able to have things reachable and not like, 
I, I understand you have minimal space. I'm not that small of a person, so I have some room to play with. Um, so that being said, uh, but I did want to go sh smaller compact size, so I was able to get them with the bullet facing outwards. Um, now, this is a competition channel originally, so I have seen people and I have run this uh, setup where the bullets point away from you. Uh, in competition, right? Most of the production guys, um, you guys will see in USPSA, use that type of uh, system. And <clears throat> it's not as efficient as, for me anyways, as coming this way, and it takes some used to, but I'm still able to punch out. If I need to reload, I'm still here. I still have my thing, I'm able to, you know? But, <clears throat> so, in, in minimizer space, it's a good, uh, it's a good balance point, as I, as I would say. And then as we come over, I have, my uh, flashlight this is a really really good duty flashlight guys um i have it in a this is a I'm sorry this is a phoenix pd 36 tac all right has 2000 lumens for duty use it also has different strobes um then it has like three different or a couple different things up to 3000 lumens but the duty use is 2000 lumens with a 2000 uh, lumen strobe uh, pretty good you know it lights up at night pretty good you know about 200 yards or so um, on this side, I have just a regular Bianchi radio uh, pouch, which is garbage, and I will be changing that soon. I'm um, just waiting to see if uh, there's a lot of changes going on in my agencies. I'm going to see if uh, they're going to stick with the same radios or not, and I'm going to get the 0-9 uh, uh, pouch for it as well. Um, that being said, I have nothing on my back. My back is clean. All right, nice and nice and clean. In case I fall down, I, don't, I potentially won't aggravate a back injury or get a back injury with something that's gonna uh, hit my spine or hit my pelvic the rear of my pelvic bone in the back you know my coccyx or whatever you want to call it um so yeah so i kind of slimmed down a little bit this is what i'm running now i've been running this for probably eight months now the belt is the newer part i've been running that since april um so i i do have some time on it at work and stuff and it's a phenomenal belt i highly recommend it guys <clears throat> All right, something that I forgot to mention is for you guys that carry tasers, right? This might be, this is my opinion on it anyways, and I've seen both ways. So uh, for you that are, are getting tasers or have a taser, like, well, where do I mount my taser? Um, there's a couple options. Uh, for me here, I would take the badge out. That's where my taser would go. If I could reach it, right? Um, some people tend to slide this over and then put the taser in between the mags, uh, the train of thought is that your deadly is always before your your you know your reloads are first. But with training, you can go straight to your reloads. You know, I don't go to my mags when I go to my flashlight. Right? I go to my flashlight. I don't even look at it. Um, right? I don't go to my mags when I go to reach my handcuffs. So I'm not even looking at it. Right? I don't go to my OC spray. So it all takes training and knowing where your equipment is. So um, that being said, I would personally run the taser here just because it's closer to me i don't have a lot of dexterity to twist right i'm not a very flexible person um i'm working on that but i'm not a very flexible person so for me to reach stuff that way or this way uh, another option um that was proposed many years ago and i don't know if it's still being i haven't really seen it is cross draw but on the uh, on your support hand that said um that you can deploy taser and if you need to deploy your gun at the same time um Again, that would change some things around. I would probably move the handcuff over here, taser right here, um, and that keeps it right-handed. And you can deploy both if you need lethal. Uh, I don't recommend that. You know, if you're gonna go non-lethal, stay non-lethal. Um, deploy non-lethal, if non-lethal fails, drop the non-lethal, go to lethal. Um, so that being said, uh, that was the one thing I forgot to put in the video and I'm gonna edit and put it somewhere in here. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching.